Welcome. Moving, locked to incense, purple sky prince. Athena of the night sky with the Frankie sense. The true servant, Medea the sorceress. Root cutters like the royal oak. Wizard walks by with the purple cloak. Magic words and the kiss of poison. This little chickadee I know. She casts a spell on you. With me, you'll be in paradise. Spoke to the good thief on the cross next to Jesus. Dragon Venom, Mysterion, look into my eyes. My girl likes to party all the time. I'm a sex shooter, shooting love in your direction. I'm a sex shooter, come and play with my affections. I stayed up all night so you could feel alright with Athena making medicine. The whole rhythm section was a purple game as the eagle flies. Here comes some purple rain. Latex, get them high. Thank you, Teddy, for that purple magic. Welcome back to Lady Babylon. So tonight, we're going to kick it up a notch. I am going to give you the secret name of Rome. Yeah, this is something that I like to throw out there. See if people can find it. Inevitably, they don't. Tonight, on the back of my words, through the power of the messenger, I am going to bring you that secret sacred name you will understand when you know her fantastic um what do we have to do to get this place cleaned up we have to bring in the fumigators right bring them in bring them in we've got to get this temple clean and Let's call down. Let's pull down one of those powers. Here comes Hermes. twofold test there have been things planted in your way that you will be able to pick up you will be able to hold those symbols and you will be able to assemble the name now let's get going i want you to be able to jump right into this because i know i know satanic congregation those of you who have been through the initiation, 
I know you will be able to find your way. Let's do it, shall we? Hit it. Hit that first one, Chewy. Fantastic. Who are we dredging up tonight? This is Galen. Everybody, big shout out for Galen. Big shout out for Galen. Here we go. Oh, my God. When is he? Second century, Anno Domini. He's the, the physician, the body physician, some people call him, of Marcus Aurelius. And he's a big wig in Rome, baby. Oh, God. He knows his stuff. He truly knows his stuff. Well, thanks to one Robert Lee in 2013. What did Robert Lee do? Robert Lee from Essex wrote a dissertation. And that dissertation in classics was a translation of a work by Galen. Oh, fantastic. What? Um, Congratulations, Robert. This is the official award of Lucifer's Star. And it's and you deserve it, buddy. You deserve it. Nice. What did Robert do? He took a text that all the other classicists ignore because they're, you know, it's it's Harvard. You know what I mean? They're too busy copying other things. Um uh so Robert at Essex put it together for us. Oh, Robert, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, there are a couple of references uh, that you will recognize who have been through the initiation. Um, we're going to that dark harbor, right? We're going right, sailing right into it. Oh, God. Okay, here we go. Let's just, let's not hold back. These people need their, their dope. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, you do. Let's see the first one and blow it up. So tell us, Galen. Tell us, Galen, and by the way, you, you Greeklings who are taking the Greek right now, this is second sophistic. Second sophistic, this is not this. What happened to Greek? Oh, God, it's so sad. Let me just tell you this story. What happened to Greek? Mm. Um, it was so widespread and successful that the common instinct started drawing it down away from what it had been the 6th and 5th centuries when it was at its height, when there was power. I'm going to show you some 6th and 5th century Greek tonight. Oh, God, makes me so happy. Oh, God, Ooh, love it. I don't think that was the right word, happy. Let's go um, to the text. Galen, tell us. Um, he says, look, Piso is this guy's name, right? Or Piso, if you want to modernize it. Um, what is he doing? He's got a son, a very beloved son. And his son happens to be, um, he hurt himself. Oh, and who is this guy, Piso? Uh, he's a big wig, you know, one of those knights. He's got a position, official position, you know, uh, his son, he was going through an initiation and this initiation into the mysteries. Yeah, the hierurgia. Really? Of the mysteries? Yeah. Um, well, he got hurt on his horse. He got hurt on his horse. And Galen had to go treat him. And uh, he's, he noticed, Galen happened and noticed while he was there um, that his father was you know, into these theriacs. He had his theriac scrolls out. You know what I mean? He had his theriac. Did everybody see in the news, Herculaneum? Woo! Right, I told you. <laughs> Guess what it has? <laughs> That's the game we'll play. Guess what's in the library? Okay, um, and uh, what happens? Yes, okay, so um, he noticed that he's reading these. Give me the next one. He noticed that he's reading these texts. Uh, these scrolls, right? And he says, hey, I noticed your interest in Theriac, so let me fill you in. And so he starts to talk to him. And what we're going to trace tonight is the use of the Theriac in the Julian clan, right? We're going to follow Julius Caesar to Augustus, right? We're going to go from Augustus to Nero. And we're going to go from Nero to Marcus Aurelius and his whole imperial family. They're all on drugs. Okay, now wait. Now wait. Remember, the head of my department 
in my dissertation defense said, the Romans just wouldn't do such a thing when it comes to drugs. But it turns out the whole imperial family is, Galen says. He's supplying them this drug. What is this drug? It's a theriac. Oh, God. What is a theriac? By the way, I've got to say, a um, couple of interviews coming up. One with General Lee. Got to love it. And another one with Hamilton. And um, check them out when they come out. But this is kind of the bedrock of the evidence that will push us forward so that people will start making the connections and figuring out what was the actual history. Did you think it was a guy that came out of the oh, Red Sea and it splits in half? <laughs> oh, sit down, atheist. Here we go. Are you ready? Go to the next one. Um, what's this source I'm bringing in now? Ready? Um, are you paying attention? Because you should be formulating the name for those of you who were in the congregation, right? Who aren't, didn't just come to watch. Um, here we go. Yeah. Oh, God. And what, what's going on here? We're looking for the gospel, the Evangelia. And some of you say, well, look at that. It looks just like Evangelia which is the gospel. Yes, that's our context, right? We already got off the ship. We're standing here with Galen. Every drug combo has a gospel. Yeah, everyone has something that it does, things that it cures. It's the gospel of salvation. And are these words occurring uh, occurring in the pre-Christian? You mean they're talking about gospels and Christ before Christianity? Oh, my God, you bozos thought you owned the world, didn't you? You thought it was all you. Oh, my God. There he is. Jesus. Welcome, Jesus, by the way. Everybody here should know that Jesus was a snake wrangler. <laughs> and I don't mean reptiles. Whew. Let's follow the poisons, right? Everybody who's here knows we're here for the poisons. We're here to bring back that cult, right? We're here to show you, right? Here it is, seeping in. We're all necromancers. You've come to the place of necromancy. Run. Here we go. Go to the next one. Br bring it up. Boom, third, yes. Oh, fantastic, right? Here's your gospel, people. Your, what does this say in Greek? Soterion de pragmaton eu angelon. Oh, did you hear me use my digamma? Yeah, eu angelon. Oh, sounds like a W. Love it. When you say it the right way, things happen. They use it in their tech. To make things happen. They do it with the pharmacy. Okay, let's see how they do it. Go to the next one. Oh, what is this thing, by the way? This is the this is the, the good news of those salvation things that we possess. This is the gospel. You mean the gospel was originally a gospel of drugs? You know, it's hilarious to watch. I'm sitting there with the watchers, and we're all watching. And I tell them, I said, I tried to tell them, and they didn't listen. It was backwards. People right now, the geniuses in the academic world, right now are talking about one, two, three drugs. Were the drugs possibly involved in this, right? Right? The very gospel is a gospel of salvation by drugs. It is a pharmaceutical religious event called a mystery. Fantastic. You just learned the mysteries. All those of you out there who are evangelicals, you just learned what the mystery was. Don't you love it? Now, clues put together the name. Put together her name. 
She's that one with those seven stars. Put it together. Woo! Love it. Let's go to the next one. Nobody does this, right? Let's spoil. Let's throw out all the dope for the kitties. Look, this is a big, long one. Blow that up, Chewy, because it's so big. Writing's tiny. Yeah. Um. Oh, this is for people who were bitten, right? He says nobody who's ever bitten, right, Um. is if they have taken the antidote immediately after getting bitten um, or if they had the prodote, they had the what? They had the prodote. You know, you can take these drugs all the time. Marcus Aurelius did. Mithridates did. And unfortunately, when it came time for him to die, he couldn't poison himself <laughs> because he had so many in him circulating. Wow, that's fantastic. I love that. I love that. Cleopatra, too. Cleopatra, too. That's what Galen talks about. Cleopatra. You know who she's in the line of? I hear it's, was it Porphyrian? I'm not quite sure, but somebody check that. Um, Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Oh, God. She couldn't kill herself, says Galen. Right? She couldn't kill herself. That whole story of the serpent biting her, that's BS, right? But what do we know happened? Um, well, we do know that she, they found her corpse with, she'd bitten a, bitten a chunk out of her arm and applied a drug there that could kill her. Fantastic. She had two people with her. There were two servants of her. Yeah. They'd rather die. It was a message, Galen says, to Augustus. It was a bird. Flipping the bird. Look, both, both I and my closest advisors would rather die than give you an ounce of what you're looking for, you pervert. Love it. Love it. Brilliant. How did they do this? Galen tells us the magic is happening, people. Marcus Aurelius is getting high all the time, right? And everybody's noticing. How are they noticing? Have you seen how good he looks? Have you seen how good he looks? That guy looks 10 years younger, right? And Galen's like, shh. Right? <laughs> Nobody found out while he was alive, and he was giving it to his entire family says the whole imperial family. Oh, do you understand? Will you hear? Will you have ears to hear? Right? <laughs> Go to the next one. That, that reminds me we have more of that text. Oh, oh, look at this. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, Galen says, um, hey, there's a lot of Panurgia stuff going on out there. What is that? Um, that's when you... You're doing it, he says, for the money. <laughs> You're doing it for the money. And he says, what happens? The drugs inevitably get spoiled. These are very precise formulae with upwards of 50 to 70 ingredients. They're compounds, very complex, with measurements, specific measurements, right? Plenty. Plenty says it's ridiculous how small the measurements of these things get, right? Oh, my goodness. So you got to be careful, man. You got to be careful. And so that's what we've got. Hit us with the Galen says, bring that last one back up again. Galen says, look, Galen says, look, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happens? Um, they adulterate or they destroy whatever. The, they put something else in there and cause a problem, right? You can't get it. He said, there's only certain people who are in the know. <laughs> he uses a participle who are in the know. Good. Um, go to the next one. And he, by the way, he says they do it just so they can sell drugs to make money. Oh, sell drugs to make Does that sound familiar to you? Does that sound like something that, well, that's the air that is in Rome. Second century. Okay, but, you know, look, we're not here for that. We're here to see this cult stuff, right? We're here to 
Okay, great. Augustus, Marcus Aurelius, Nero, all on drugs. All have their own formula. You know, Augustus had his own formula. I'm going to show it to you at the end, right? Oh, and the Toxicon. It's the arrow poison, people. We're back there with the air. You guys all know that. We've been here. Look, we've been with these cult junkies. You give me something new, Amon. Okay. Okay. Hit, give me the next one. Here we go. Look at this. Oh, this is a one-liner, right? Um, so... Yeah, what do we understand about drugs? Well, we know this theriac has an amazing capacity of an advantage for the body. Yeah, yeah. And it can be taken every day. Every day. Oh, really? That's is that what Marcus Aurelius is into? Um, let's see, let's see. Ooh, we're getting close. We're getting close. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. Um so the divine Marcus, look at what he calls him. He calls him the divine Marcus Aurelius. The, you know, most of us are not so lucky as to be declared divine while alive, right? Now, in Rome, yeah, emperor dies, boom, immortality, right? You, what do you think Heracles did? Why do you think they burned Heracles' life? Did anybody notice that? Right? Why didn't they show that on Disney? They should have shown that. It should have been, ah, with his flesh coming off. Right? The poison drizzling down onto his skin. Yeah, screaming his head off. That would have been the way to go. I think Mel Gibson might want to do something like that. Um, we get him to do a good Heracles. Uh, yeah, get next one. Yeah, um, people, look at this. What do you use the theriac for? What do you use it for, right? Um, again, what is the theriac? It's this multi-combo drug, right? A whole bunch of ingredients um, that you're using daily. Yeah, and what does it do? Um, it nourishes you. <sighs> it nourishes you. Yeah, kind of in a magical kind of way, kind of like ambrosia. Ambrosia, you'll come out on the other side looking better than you do now. Okay, now I'm 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 talking directly to my audience. Everybody, satanic congregation, and anybody who wandered in is like, oh God, let me out. Uh when you enter at this level, yeah, you're finding something that is buried. In quantum space, there's something of the universe that's about to come out and reveal itself, and you're gonna poop in your pants. Give me that. Give me that next one, right? Don't don't defecate, Chewie. Don't let them defecate in the ship, please. Yes, please report here with a mop. Yeah. Um. What are we talking about when we're talking about the drugs? I just wanted you to see that Galen is very precise about you know each of the drugs has an activity or activities, things that add up to its gospel of salvation. Do you understand? The name of Rome, keep thinking about it, comes together. Yeah, so we've got the gospel, right? We've got the power and how things work, the energia, right? All of that Galen is considering, and he's like, how do we test this stuff? Right, well, um, you know, if you're in the right position, uh, you use a person who's been condemned to death, right? And then you get that person and, you know, you take your venom and you use your venom and then you give them the antidote. Yeah, and, uh, you know, if it doesn't work, no harm done. Yeah, right, because you're still following justice. Yeah, how else are you gonna, how, right? Remember Cersei, do you think she cared, right? No, well, so Galen says they've got it to a science now with these theriac drugs. Um, they're balancers, they're antidotes for some of the formulae on the other hand of the equation. And this is what nobody sees in Galen's work. 
there's a formula that you and I have looked at, Satanic Congregation, and you know it's addressed to Nero. And you know that in that is the dark harbor and the Palma Medes, the, the potion of Medea, the communion, the drug, the black death. Um, that formula, I'm giving you this tonight, um, because you can't sell something that's so precious. The formula is mirrored. The formula for the Black Death is mirrored next to the Theriac genius of the way that Andromachus wrote it. And a little bit heady, if you ask me. Yeah, a little bit heady. He's, you know, he's showing off. He's showing off for his buddy Nero. All right, all right, let's keep going. Back to the text. Oh, my mind. Um, do you think they have her name yet? No, I don't think they do. All right. Um, yeah, so you can establish the integrity of the usefulness of that antidote, right? And we can do this. This is where he says we can do this if we, you know, we take criminals, right, who are condemned. And we can do that or um, we can do what you and I do is not uh, people with authority. Oh, goodness. I spilled all over. Joey, get us fire extinguisher. No, we don't need a fire extinguisher. Just a, Okay, just leave it right there. Um we, we need to establish with authority that this man just spilled tea all over Hell's Kitchen. Um, no, bring that text back up and let's just keep working. If we short out, that's too bad. Um, yeah, so this is too important. Um, look at this. It's those who have the knowledge of how these things work, right? Those are the people who can provide us with the proper curatives, and the um, how to mix and how to make. They're the ones that can do that. But of course, they are the ones who have those ears to hear, right? Those who know. He says it's those who know. Give me the next text. Next text. Boom. Let's blow that up. Oh, fantastic. And what happens? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We all know that the greater part of kingship, right, is that common salvation that we are all looking for is everybody looking for salvation it's not just the christians right who um want and need salvation it is the pagan world um before the christian world that gave the christian world that drive isn't that nice look it's all backwards a bunch of druggies the gospel is actually a drug mechanism. Isn't that nice? It's like the it's every evolutionary biologist's wet dream, right? I feel the, everything is wet in here, right? It's amazing. It feels like we're in a cave. Did we, did we just reproduce the cave of the nymphs? I think Pythagoras, that dirty creep, is around here somewhere. Where'd he go? You know what that was? I think that was the ghost of Pythagoras that just spilled my tea. It's disgraceful. Go to the next one. Love it. Mm. You needed some relief, didn't you? Sometimes it's too serious. Is that the next one? Fan yeah, no, that's the next, next one after that. Good. Chewy, excellent. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, this is for, okay, this one is just to smash paradigms. Yeah, just to take a... Take a sledgehammer to the folks who think they know everything. Now, remember, um, Dr. Pagels will tell you that women in antiquity, you like that huge general statement, like, you know, they're all one thing. Um, women in antiquity uh, didn't do anything but stayed inside the house and did their domestic chores, which, first of all, just sounds funny on the surface, doesn't it? You know, it's like, that sounds like something somebody made up who maybe didn't know so much. Yeah, no, it's weird. So dedicated to those who say such foolish things and don't know, here's a little 
just a little evidence from Galen. Look, pull up that Galen. Yeah, look at the top here. Um, look at the name that's on the first line. It's the sixth word in, right? Arian, right? Arian. Who is this? Ooh, who is she? What does it say about her? Oh, it says everybody talked her up. Everybody talked her up. She had a reputation, if you know what I mean. Yep, yep, yep. What'd they talk her up for? What'd they talk her up for? Make it big. They talked her up because of what? Because she was a better philosopher than anybody around by far. And she had a knowledge of Plato that nobody else had had. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wait a minute. Women don't get educated. They stay inside. Bull. Yes, your image. Hey, hey, Pagels, Dr. Pagels, your understanding of the past does not reflect the evidence. So, I'm sorry, Lucifer wants his money back. Give me the next one. Oh, did you feel that? That was a little bit of an aura. Did you feel that? And everybody's like, ooh, did people feel that aura? It went out. It went out from us. Oh, I'm going to give you one more, and then I'm going to purify again. Are you ready? Oh, God, yeah. There's all sorts. There's all sorts. Look, these things differ. I brought you this because I, want, I wanted you to see that the powers of these drugs differ, and their uses um, are complex. Galen is just, he's basically saying, look, this is the foundation of medicine. He goes back and he quotes Hippocrates directly. And he says, look, this whole drug thing, this is the bomb. This is what makes everything work. This is the energy of the frigging cosmos. Now do you know why the mystery right, is coming from this group? Right? Listen to the science that's behind it. All right, listen. Wonderful. Bring it up. And next. Look here, people. People, look at Christ. I thought, you know what? I've, we've been saying Christ here and Christ there so much. Let's just bring the Christ in. And look, here we are with the Christ. And notice in parentheses, gang, um, Greek gang, that it's from Rio. And that's great. We all want that. We, we all know what that means at its oldest form. It means to be stung by the gadfly. We all know that. Wait, what does it mean to be rubbed in and used as an ointment? And who, who is it that it quotes? Quotes Aeschylus when Aeschylus is writing about Prometheus. Yeah, the Savior. Oh, my goodness. You know who's eating his liver? This is the thing you knuckleheads always leave out. And you know who I am if I'm addressing you. You know. This is what you always leave out. You think you're so smart and you traipse around. You follow the clues. And you, follow, and you got the, all the money and resources in the world. Right? To dip your fingers. All the intelligence right there. And you never figure it out. You never do. Bring that definition up again, please. Oh, what is it that they always miss? I don't know. Now he's got me interested. He's got me interested. Yeah. Um, there is a savior who brought you salvation. There is a savior who brought you salvation. He bore the wrath of of God for you. Why? Why did he do that? That you may have ionic life. Wait a minute. When is Aeschylus? Oh, God, he's sixth and fifth centuries. He's at the height, man. This is like Mr. Drama. Oh, God. Go to the next one. Mm, bring it in. We're going to bring it down to the root. Ready? Here we go. Here's Prometheus. And what's Prometheus telling you? You know what it was? 
You know what it was, says Prometheus? I'll tell you what happened. The mortals were morons. They had no antidotes to any sort of problem, disease that they had. I had to show them. I had to show them what? The ones that were the ones that you eat, the ones that were the ones that you drink, and the ones that you Christ on. Does everybody see that on the one, two, three, four, fifth line down? Christ on. You're not going to learn this in church, baby. You're not going to learn it because everybody there, Protestant and Catholic alike, follows a fairy tale, an unreality. Oh, giving you the communion. Oh, yes. You know what happens? It's magically transformed. It doesn't feel like it, but it's magically transformed. There you go. You're good. Come back next week. Yeah. Do you know what that was based on? That was based on a real Christ who was arrested in a public park with a naked boy at 4 a.m. yelling, I am not a child trafficker. <sighs> Get this man his drugs. Get that man his drugs. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Bring him up. There's a creepy Jesus. There he is. We know what your thorns are for, you dirty, dirty, dirty Christ. <sighs> it's lovely. Look at him. He looks so, I don't know, that one kind of looks good looking. You know what I mean? I don't know. He, I could hang out with him. What? Did the AI understand that one? That's not Jesus. Get that guy out of here. That's not Jesus. <sighs> Where is he? You got one more, don't you, Jesus? Bring him in. This is when they got the sacred name, man. This is this is important. No, that's it. Oh, yeah, there. There. What? He's got, that's where he's got the, oh. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to the text. These people are like, look, I'm, I got, I got things to do. Let's hit it. Yep, next one. Oh, God. Um, what is it, people? Now, I'm going to show you something. You're going to think it's from the Bible. That's the trick. It's not. It's not. <laughs> seeing they don't see hit the next one and hearing they don't hear do you hear what i just said i just showed you the savior and i brought you the very words of the savior that is not from the gospel it's not from the new testament at all it's not even apocryphal stuff do you know what that is? That's old Greek. When they created the mysteries that Jesus was a part of. Oh, can you feel it? It's starting to burn a little bit. Did you put some oil on that? Thank you, sir. Let's go. Where's the next one? Hit it, Chewy. We're going to get through this quick because they, they know it's coming. They know it's coming. I was going to purify them. Um, look. What, what's John, what's that you want to tell us at the time when Jesus was walking around? Remember when Jesus was walking around, um, there, the thing that you call the Torah today was a couple hundred years old. So it had enough time to saturate a reading audience. Yeah. And what does he say, right? What does John say? Just like Moses, he lifted up that ofen, he lifted up that serpent in Eremoi. In that wilderness, yeah, yeah. So the Son of Man, same thing, right? Needs the same right. Yeah, fantastic. Did you think you could be a Christian? Did you, you came here tonight? You thought you could be a Christian without being able to drink the Black Death? Then you're nobody. You're a joke. Isn't that funny? We look at ourselves in the mirror. Humanity is a joke right we think we follow a fairy tale we don't know who we are we don't know where we're going we don't know what kind of people we are and you know who said that bacchus said that in greek in euripides play his masterpiece which is an initiation if you didn't know the bacchae was an active initiation Go get yourself turned on right now. For those of you who have picked up the name, 
you'll feel when you do the name, you will understand the name and be able to vocalize it, but you won't. You won't. Because it's not in the name. It's in the function behind the name. Imagine if you had a wife or a mother or a daughter, and that person had a name that was the reflection of who they are. Imagine that. You're a reflection. Who I'm a reflection? No, you're a reflection. No, you are. Yes, you are a reflection through a black hole. Thank you, MIT. Those, could somebody give those guys a, an award for figuring out the crazy, crazy reality that is not the fairy tale? It's beautiful, though. I love it. Don't you like you? You got a problem with being a reflection? I bet some millennials have a problem with being a reflection. Go to the next one. I'm I'm sorry. I didn't. That was grumpy. That was grumpy. Um, here, John, give me a little bit more. In order that what? So that those who believe. So look, I'm telling you, people, look at the end of this line. Do you see the zoane ionion? Zoane ionion. What is zoane ionion? Oh, don't you like? It makes me so bothered when I get the when I, you can feel it when you hit the right place in the Greek. You feel it. It's like there's power. I love it. What is that ionian? It's not eternal. Don't translate that as I is eternal. We had a whole satanic initiation on that. Everybody's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, keep going. Um, uh, well, that's what the mystery offers. It doesn't offer temporal life extension, right, into the beyond. No, it doesn't. It offers ionic life. Don't you wish you knew what that was? Yeah, I could have given it to you. We were by the well. You know how you are. We were by the well, you know. Mm, there you were. All I did was ask you for a bucket. That's all I did. Give me some, give me some water. Yeah, I'd have given you the water of life. Have you seen me with my snakes? <laughs> Christ me. Christ me and Christ those little boys who are your disciples jesus christ you have boys as disciples jesus christ is walking around with 12 children and finally gets arrested with a naked one and you wonder well, this is question number two question number one for the first evangelist that reaches out to you the first evangelical that tries to convert you First one, you have two questions for him now. The first one is, what's, what's that naked kid doing with Jesus in the public park at 4 a.m. when he gets arrested? Well, what's going on? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, and the other one has to do with, oh, I forget, who cares? Let's go on. I'll remember in a second. If I got lost there with Jesus in the garden, it's so compelling. It's the other thing you're supposed to remind me to. It's the other thing you're supposed to ask you. Um, evangelical yeah there's someone that offers you communion you know what i mean um because it all comes down to this right here right here mark 16 18 yeah you're gonna you're gonna take up the hobby of snakes you're gonna drink the thanasimon do you see that word the thanasimon look at that it's got two accents isn't that nice i love it when greek words have two accents it's like they got a little special oomph, you know what I mean? Like, oof, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get two pitches, you know what I mean? I'm gonna roll, maybe a circumflex. There's a circumflex in there. Love it. Um, what happens? They're gonna drink these thanasimo, and it's not gonna hurt them. Why are they gonna be able? Now, first of all, that word thanasimo, that's the word for a pharmacological preparation, a drug. Um, compound. And what does it do? It induces death. Oh, nice. You mean like the black death? Like the black death. 
Jesus says you can drink the potion of Medea and not be harmed. <clears throat> now, for some reason, for some reason, it's making me a little bit queasy. You mean this, this man, this man from Galilee, because of his association, his association with those boys and those, what are those drug-using magi that got involved? What'd they give him? He was a bunch of money, and it was a ton of drugs. Drugs and money. Can you imagine? Christians, can I just, can we reason for a minute together, please, brothers and sisters? Come together. I'm not your brother. <laughs> um, can we just reason together? The man was given drugs and cash at his birth. Drugs and cash by people who said they had seen a star. Yeah, they followed his star. Do you get it? Right? Right? Is that polythronic? No, that star is not polythronic. That's just the throne, baby. Right? You don't understand if you haven't been here. If you haven't been baptized into that cult knowledge. Love it. Let's keep going. By the way, Marcus Aurelius, they say he was looking so good that people started questioning what's going on. And it didn't get out while he was alive. But now the emperors that follow it, there's a lot more. They're a lot more loosey-goosey with the, with the theriac. You know what I mean? And they, everybody said Marcus Aurelius is looking great, brah. Right? Oh, okay. Great. Fantastic. Um, Galen did have to adjust his opium. You know, right? Marcus Aurelius walked around always on opium, chronically on opium. Isn't that, imagine that. Now I know why the head of my department of my dissertation said the Brahmins just wouldn't do such a thing because nobody wants to consider that they would be drug users. These are the heroes of a lot of nerds. Yeah, a lot of history nerds. Oh, God, even those philosophy nerds love Marcus Aurelius, did you know your, your hero was chronically stoned? Yeah. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is, Galen says, you can mix these things together, and they will have negative effects that other ingredients in the formula will mollify, right? And he says, you can even have a drug that has one effect, put it with another drug, and it, he says, it will do the opposite of what it did before. Oh, interesting. That's some, that's some sophisticated, you know, that's some sophisticated chemistry and whatnot going on. We bounced too close to that supernova for a minute. Did you feel it? Oh, God. I love it that you're here with me. You know what I mean? People don't realize that you're, like, you're there and you're on that throne and you're, boom, traveling. They don't understand it. <laughs> if you get pulled over, don't pull that shit on a cop. <laughs> Let's go. Get your driver's license, dummy. All right. Give me that. Um, yeah, go ahead. Look, people. We're, look, we can even pull this stuff out of the what you call the Torah, but is actually the Septuagint, right? Look at this. Um, what, is it, what does he say? He says they have eyes, but they're blind, right? And they have ears, but they're deaf. Now, why is it? What, this is Isaiah. I thought Isaiah was way back there in a thousand, right? A couple generations after Adam. Uh, no. Um, this is third century. And of course, contextually, right, people come to you. I know, I know they do. And they try to do things to you. And I've got dolls and you can show me where they touch you on the dollies. But mentally, I'm talking mental dollies. Get your mind out of the gutter. Mental dollies. And what they do is they try to make you think that this text is totally different culture, totally different language than it actually is in. 
So when you look at the language that it's actually in, it mirrors what's going on in the literature around it in the third century. And what are they using in the third century? They're using that expression. You know, um, you need to have ears to hear, right? What, what, what does that mean? Well, you have eyes, but you don't see. You have ears, but you don't hear, right? It was not Isaiah who descended from yon mountain top, right? We'll get Charles Neston to play him again, right? It's the same thing as Moses, right? There he is, and he's going to give you this. No, bullshit. Look at what's in the text. What does the text actually say? Well, we see this reflected in the New Testament because it's immediately preceding it. People are reading this. Jesus Christ, before he was arrested with a naked boy in a public park, he was quoting um, a couple of sources and one of them, somebody you, you that were popular at this time, and one of them is one people don't even read. It was kicked out of the canon, right? Enoch, right? He's quoting Enoch all the time. He quotes Enoch more than anybody else. You know what Enoch is? That's the that's the book that talks about the drug dealers, right? Who are teaching all the ladies, right? Why are they teaching the ladies the knowledge of the drugs? Well, like, because you know, you know, you're a son of God and. You know, she's a you know daughter of men, and you know uh, that's the way the world works. Thanks, Aphrodite. Love it, right? Otherwise, you and I wouldn't be here. This would be a void. Yeah, thank you, Aphrodite. Right? They understood that she's the mother of Rome. Right? Are you getting the name? Is it gone? First person in um, wins a free charge up direct connection right to hell love it love it let's go give me the next one give me the next one mm. okay let's keep this thing clean yeah we know how the drugs work you know we know the ways they work and what sorts they are i just want to let you know these are not amateurs right so you've seen all i keep bombarding you with all these drugs right that they're using that are related to the mysteries and these are the drugs that people told me I could not show you. I could not show you. So give me the next one. So that's my mission, right? Here you go. Uh, yeah. Look at the end of the first line. Thediakin. Right? Petty haste. Amen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Look, this is what he's going to do. He's gonna, I'm going to tell you about how these things are used, right? That's what this whole thing's about. Right? Oh, God. But look at the last line. Ek playstone, kaiton, kalistone, pharmacon, eskewas. Look what kind of drugs you can skewadzo. You can construct. You can synthesize. You can synthesize the ones that are the best. And these theriacs, they are the best. These multi combo drugs, they're the best. Give us the next one. Oh, God. Oh, yeah. What is it? Okay. Then here. And then we're going to jump off here. Okay. Um, look, 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 look. Um, Galen, every once in a while, looks up from his scroll and turns away from his talking about reason and, you know, um, things that we should be able to understand because we've come to conclusions based on our examination evidence. Every once in a while, he gets up out of that chair and he kind of reveals a little bit of his personality. And here he is, you know, and some people say, oh, it's pseudo gay and it's not again. I'll let you people play with that. I don't care. Um, um, yeah, there's as somebody who did his dissertation on Galen. See, this translation, by the way, this dissertation, it's a translation and commentary. I did that for my master's degree under John Scarborough, and it was a translation and commentary of Galen's Black Bile. Now, I'll tell you, just from having um, worked enough Galen to appreciate who he was, um, this treatise is awfully Galenic. There's a lot for, for the 10 reasons that they may find that this, 
you know, he doesn't use the, this combination of words as much. You know, it's not in this treatise for some reason. For all of those reasons, there are 10 others for each of those that this is genuine Galen. So um, Robert Lee, appreciate the translation. The commentary is fantastic. Commentary is fantastic. You know, it's a Greek commentary. It's a philologist commentary. All of my students, it's a must read. Okay, um, nice job. Um, but the whole introduction on whether it's pseudo Galen or Galen, oh God, <sighs> no, I, I'm not even going to go there. I'm going to follow John Scarborough and say, no thanks. Go to the next one. Excellent. Blow this thing up. Blow this thing up. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, look, what about the applications of these drugs, right? Um, there are some that have the ability to for you to ward them off right and there are some that will kill you straight up right so the theriac the only reason i wanted to bring that in it's a little bit out of context the theriac um is there as that as a balancer it is not in and of itself a treatment right they used it marcus aurelius at least uses it like it's nourishment right daily um making himself look so good and fresh right and being with it by the way it also treats depression isn't that nice you can't walk around <laughs> depressed all the time if you have purged um that depression that diamond that power if you will um, if you've purged it, you can't walk around with it. And that's what these drug combos are doing. Not just the Theriac on its own, but um, the Theriac paired with its Black Death. And that's the one that we as people will be discovering now in the new libraries. That's what we'll be discovering is what it was that it was doing to you. Right. Hamilton says another 10 years um, to get an AI that'll be able to put together a scientific model of what all of these interactions are and what the big picture of it is. 10 years. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> We're going to have to speed things up. I don't have. Do you have 10 years? I don't have 10 years for this. Go to the next one. No, really. What does the drug do? Right, he tells Nero. He says, "You're you're going to be the source of this stuff, right? This is what gives the adamantine freedom. You want to become Adam? Wait a minute. I thought Adam was a dude in a story with a this. Nope. You want to become Adam? Why do you think Paul and Jesus were talking about the second Adam? <laughs> Why do you think they were talking like that? It." the story and the text were appropriated so that you would think like that when that's not where it goes to it goes back to what the atom is what is that atom the atom is what the dark harbor gives you the dark harbor will burn off your mortality yeah yeah wow should we get some People, I keep, I keep asking people, how do we do this? How do we get this, right? It, it, if nothing else for depression, right? A little bit, of, maybe, <sighs> I don't know. Next one, freedom, baby. What is this? Yeah, right. It's that power that comes from the medwa. And I keep saying this. We talked about the potion of the medwa in the past, and I keep saying it, and I get a lot of questions about it. So let me just straighten it out right now. Um, what is that that I'm saying? Um, medwa. Yeah, that's the name that is the title of a person in history that we all know very well through the avenue of plays through the avenue of mythology yeah one woman who was a genius when it came to putting together these drugs yes she's the pioneer of the christing 
Let's look at her name really quick. Everybody asks me, what is that Medewa that you keep saying? Right? Medwa. Who is that? Next one. Who is that? Oh, God. Here it is. Here it is. Medea. Here it is in the Greek. Right? Medea. Hit me with the next one. What does this Medea mean? And people were asking, what are the tattoos? That's one of them. That's one of them. But here, I'm going to do some magic. For those of you who have stopped paying attention for the name, you're going to lose it right here. Are you ready? The ancients called Epsilon, what you and I call Epsilon, they called it A. As they called Omicron, ooh. Ooh, do you see that little, what's going on? There's something wiggling in that Yoda. I see an Upsilon. What do I know about that Upsilon? I know darn well that that thing has a digamma. It's got a digamma in it. Yeah, in Greek, there are letters that are invisible. Deal with it. Go to the next one. There's a digamma there. Hit the next one because it's it. Look at the succession here. Look, people. The A and the ache are the ooh and the ook. So those of you who are sitting there will realize, oh, look, they have a common element in that Yoda and that Upsilon. Fantastic. Keep going. Give me the next one. Oh, there's one more. Yeah. Now watch this, people. I'm going to give you the fear. I'm going to give you the fear. Deos. Right? When people ask me, what, what is God from? What is Theos? Right? Oh, and they're going to spill. It means this and that. And they're always wrong. Right? I want you to get off of your train and come to reality. What is Deos? Deos. That's what you feel on the inside of you. When you know it's coming, you know that train is coming, right? Look at who told us on the second line. That's Ammonius. Hey, Ammonius. Yeah, namesake. Love it. Look what's written in parentheses in purple, right? Dwells. Look at that second letter. It's a digamma, and it's sitting there hiding. I say medwa. Because that is the oldest form of the original Christ. And from her name, we get medicine. From her title, we get medicine, the medical arts, right? You wouldn't be getting medicine without medewa. You wouldn't. Fantastic. Go to the next one. This is just, it's just linguistics. It's not theory. Right? It's just linguistics. Think about the Dea or the Dewa. Yeah, the Dewa. Good. Hit me on the next one. Boom. And finally, look, games. Let's play some games with the Dia. Yeah, what is that? Well, it's essentially the Deus. What is those Romans? They must have marbles in their mouth. Right? I can't understand them. Go to the next one. Mm, I'm just kidding. Any of you Latin people out there, you know that Greek is smart. <laughs> Did you pick Latin because you're not? <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know it's been years. I've been waiting for that one since grad school. Okay, what is this? Iobolon. Dei kaitis hupognam teiri da me. Oh, God. What? What's going on? Somebody's getting demayed over there on the end, right? Somebody's getting overcome, getting destroyed, right? Struck by the jaws of a of what? Of somebody who hurls eos, a hurler of eos. What is a hurler of eos? It's that lightning, baby. It's that poison. When we talk about the purple. We're talking the EOS, and that's just how they're using it in the ancient world. So it's kind of, I wanted you to see that. Yeah. Um, same one? Yep. Yep. And so, look, these theriacs, they can treat you if the poison is coming from the source, you know, whether it's a bite or whatever, or a dude putting it onto an arrow or, right, what else? If you did Take the potion of death. Look at look at the bottom line. Pomathanatu. And what kind of death is it? It's guanu. 
It's cyanic. It's black death. The theriac is used in combo with black death so that when Jesus Christ, you can take that down. We're almost done. Thank you, people, for staying so long. I appreciate it tonight. I love you guys. I do. I got lots of love. If you were here, we'd, we'd love each other in a group. <laughs> that sounded worse. Than, that sounded worse. It's, why do you always have such dirty minds? Okay? You just love people and not have to cross that line. You know what I mean? Okay, let's go. Keep it PG, for goodness sakes. They're already going to turn me in for something else. They do every episode. Okay, let's go. Um, yeah, right, right. Um, what do you do? Look, um, what does it come down to? Hey, Nero, Nero, this is what we need. You know, get out, stop. You know that Nero went out and hunted people at night and beat them up, and he had a Praetorian a group of guardsmen who followed him around just in case things got out of hand, right? <laughs> Um, that bloodthirst is coming directly from that black death. And now you're beginning to hear. Now you're beginning to hear. It's coming directly from that black death. And he says, look, you can take somebody. You can take somebody who has taken um, one of these substances that is the poisonous, terrible, right? The one that's going to kill you, right? And um, I'll tell you what you do if you prepare this theriac thing. You're going to bring them a cup of joy. A cup of joy. You're going to enter them into hilaren, right? That's what we call the theriac, right? It is that place of extreme bliss, right? You're not going to want to come back. You're not going to want to come back. Um, you can take somebody who is in the midst of that thanasimon, that death drug, and you can give them this, and you will walk them, he says, you walk them to their bed. You'll put them into their bed with joy, with joy. That's the power. And that's what Galen says in a couple of quotes before that I gave you. That's what he says is dangerous. Do you realize the power of the cup of Lady Babylon? Do you realize it? Oh my God, you can you can cure. You can bring people salvation. You can Christ. You can Christ? Yeah. You can Christ. We can do it. Right? Oh wow. Wow. 10 years? Are you sure it's going to take 10 years? Hey, Satanic Congregation, I know you guys have brains. Figure out how it doesn't take 10 years. Um, we've got about one and a half left. Go! Give me the next one. Oh, we're going to finish up here tonight. I love this stuff. I love I love you people. Oh, I'm so full of love tonight. Can you feel it, Chewie? <laughs> Can you feel it? No? Come on. Give me a break. Yeah, okay. What's going to happen? You can lead them. Here's the lead them to their coiton. You can lead them. That's where we get our coitus, by the way. Um, you can lead them to their bed, right? And they'll be happy. And they'll have an anodyne on board. Look at that last word, anodunie. Isn't that nice? Anodunie. Oh, can you hear that little reflection from the Iota subscript, right? Classes don't, don't know whether or not to leave that thing out or not. Anodunie. Ah, I love it. it. Does something in here? It makes me kind of like tickly. Um, let's go, Caesar, and give everybody the anodyne. Um, what's an anodyne? Oh, uh, sorry, you don't know. First of all, but it's something that takes away your pain. Something that takes away that stress and that weight of that pain. You need that. An anodyne. Or you're gonna go nuts. It's the way it is. Fantastic. You want some theriac? Let's go. Not here. Not right. We can't get all the ingredients. By the way, um, I sent the ingredients from Galen to Hamilton. Maybe he will put something into his calculator and figure something out to do with it. Um, but a couple of those plants. 
you know, they're not sure. I know they found the sylphium. They found like a relative of sylphium or something. So that's possible. Um, the Limnian earth will be a little bit hard to figure out, you know, but we also need, that's the theory act, right? We also need the black death to make the formula complete for the return of the cup of Lady Babylon. So we have the formula, the recipe right there. You mean, this is not about, this is, hello, this is not about fulfilling prophecy? No, no, it's about making it. And the fact that you didn't know that that's what happened shows that you are not a dotos. You are not one who knows. Yeah, fantastic. Right, Galen, did you get it? Here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's go. Last, um, last. Uh, I wanted you to see the Roman side too. I was, I knew I was going to make fun of some Latin uh, people, people interested in Latin, the ancient language. Um, anyway, uh, this is a formula. Look at the top line. Just look at that first word, toxicum. Right? Yes, this is. We get our word toxic from this Greek root and the Romans, because their language, much like Anglo-Saxon crappery, is not advanced. So they have to borrow ideas and terms, right? They're not up at that level of sophistication yet. I'm sorry. And they, to be honest, they never really got there. <laughs> it's like, why couldn't you? No wonder they were building huts. Right, come on, that's Romulus and Remus you're talking about. Give me that. Was, they got everything from Egeria, right? <laughs> um, who is she? Look her up. Here we go. Toxicum. What is it? It's the poison on the arrows, right? It's the arrow poison. What we're not using it with arrows here. We're not out in warfare. No, what, what who is this guy that's talking? He's a first century physician. This guy is exactly contemporary with Jesus Christ. Exactly. Ugh. Love it. And what does he say? He says, look, this is for people who drink it. <laughs> you mean he's drinking the same thon of Simon, whoever this prescription is for? That audience is drinking the same thing that Jesus' peeps are drinking. If you're a Christian, you would drink it too. If you don't, you are not. And apparently, there's no more than 144,000 of you. So put that name on your head. Ah, oh, fantastic. I didn't say they were here necessarily now, right? It's that you bring them by the name. You bring them into existence, right? We're not sitting around looking for Jesus in the clouds. That's the evangelical opposite pole of what the reality of the texts are. The texts say you fulfill it. You bring it. You mean this turned into some hippie manifestation? No, go home. Hippies do not need apply. Fantastic. Whew. Know yourself. That's the first thing a hippie doesn't. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Go to the next Go to the last one. Oh, yeah. Um, so here it is. And I just want you to look down. Oh, it's about four lines down. Yeah, on the fourth line. See where it says in the very middle of the page, furorem. Yeah, I oh, love it. Furorem, right? What is that? It's fury, right? Furorem, mentis. That's your mind. Mentis. And you know, they're even stealing that from them, too. Oh, the fear of the mind. What do you get with the fear of the mind? This is what the toxicum does. And you know what it does? It causes you to talk in a way that nobody understands you. It puts you into tongues. Whoo! Are you ready? You know what happens? They put this on the arrows as they're fighting the Romans. And when they get hit with this stuff, dudes start acting crazy. And it takes more dudes to restrain the one dude. All of a sudden, you're taking out whole groups of people. With this poison. Oh, God. Galen's like, look, get it to the military. Right? It's got to be. They got to know. These theriacs are good. You can give a theriac to a dude that's just been hit by one of these arrows, and he'll come out of it. 
He won't be babbling, blah, 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 speaking in tongues. What's that Roman soldier doing? You realize that in warfare, they're making Christians. <laughs> and every Christian out there who thinks that the world is a normal place says, no, brother, that's only those charismatics. Let me tell you something. Christianity from the start was a crazy, mania-inducing, drug-using, child-trafficking business. Oh, yeah. Can you feel it now? Now the reality sets in, and you look around, and you're like, and the one dude from QAnon is like, I was right, kind of. Right? Because it's funny. Do you see the switch? They are all perverts. But the one that you think is the number one, he's, a, he's one of them. He's probably the biggest one that ever was. Oh, my God. History is a sense of irony. A real taste for irony. I love that. Cleo, give me some of that. Your sugar is so sweet. Give me the next one. Last one. And there we go, people. Look at causes this craziness, right? And um, people are people are talking in tongues. You can't understand what they're saying. Remember, take it down. Remember what we have is a roadmap. What we have is a roadmap. These sources, they are evidence of the actuality. And now is our time to take that back. Somebody took control of the narrative and the history diverged. It diverged from a real history to a fairy tale. And you and I are living in the radiation of that fairy tale. But the power of the name of Rome is the adamantine freedom when you discover her you will have the power of rome thank you for coming tonight hail satan <laughs>